So I'm gonna talk about some wallapini frogs today. and we're going to finish up the last container of the potatoes. I just, let's see, the, the other day I just harvested 40 pounds of potatoes out of our raised bed that had, I uh, planted 18 plants and I believe 17 sprouted. So out of 17 plants, I did get 40 pounds of potatoes. The other day I did one of our containers, which is right here. So yesterday I harvested the potatoes out of this flower pot. This is just basically a huge flower pot I got at Home Depot for about $10. And so this is the next one. And this is the one we're gonna harvest today. You can see I've been laying down cardboard. We have a food pantry and I get a lot of the cardboard. I love laying down the cardboard, it helps me out. I just mow this or weed eat this really close and then I lay this cardboard down, I overlap it, sometimes I'll put double layers down and then it helps me so much on weeding because the weeds grow super fast here. I don't know about where you live, but they grow super fast here. We're going to go ahead and we're gonna empty out this. The what I love about the, using these flower pots, and I've never actually done this before, is it's so clean. I can even dump these out. I can screen these and make sure I get all of the small potatoes and um, then I can reuse the soil. I have a flower pot full of composted soil or whatever kind of soil you buy and now I can reuse this and put something else in it. So I can plant carrots, I can plant beets in these, um, I could plant radishes, whatever I wanted to. So I really like this. I got about six and a half pounds out of the other red one. I don't really remember how many plants I had. Now this probably wasn't as big of a crop as what my raised beds were. I believe they were in there a little bit longer. Um, I'm waiting, this is a little bit earlier than what I normally uh, harvest potatoes. I usually wait till the vines die a little bit more, but they're kind of looking bad as it is now. So <laughs> they, uh, they're wilting, they have flowered, they have went through that process of making potatoes. So let's get this done and see how much we have. I have a scale out here, so we will get the potatoes out and just see how many we have. It is hot here today. I wanted to get this done though because I've got some other things to do. But I am taking advantage of this weather because we have had so much rain this year and everything is growing so good because we've had rain and then we'll get sunshine and then we get rain and sunshine and it's just in back and forth. But uh, we do not have any rain in the forecast for about a week, so I will have to water. I haven't had to water in a while. So what we want to do is, um, actually, let me get one of them. The great thing about having windows is your walls, is you can reach in and get stuff. So I'm just going to try to kind of break this up a little bit. These are kind of dry right now, where the top layer is. Now you could pour this out, you could dump this out and get the potatoes. Um, the only thing with that is, of course, you got to pick all the dirt back up. You could dump this in a wheelbarrow and go through it, which is maybe something I end up doing. I actually used another flower pot with the other one, so I may end up doing that. But you just basically pull these just pull them out so you can tell you can see where they actually form the little potatoes <coughs> you gotta be careful because you don't want to make too much of a mess now I did fertilize these see there was a potato I did fertilize these when I put these in. I put bone broth, bone broth. I did put some bone meal, some blood meal, and some ashes because I couldn't find potash. So um, I put a little bit of dirt in the bottom. If you've seen my potato video, I put a little bit of dirt in the bottom, and then I put the bone meal, the blood meal, and the potash. 
and then I planted my potatoes after kind of mixing that around with my hands. And then I planted the potatoes. I put some more soil on top and then I did the same thing. I just kind of sprinkled those three things on top. Just mixed it in a little bit, real lightly. And, um, and then I just kept, when they started sprouting, I would just put a little extra soil and eventually got this filled up. So we're gonna see how many, so you can see the potatoes right there. But I have a hanging scale in the greenhouse that I used with, when we had goats, we would weigh the baby goats. So I have that and I've been using that. I've set it to zeroed it out with my bucket so that it won't weigh the bucket. But we're just gonna get these and um, we're just gonna put them in here. And then we'll weigh them and see how many we get. That's a pretty good size one. You get a good range, a good range of potatoes. All right, I think we're gonna use the bucket that I used, or the other flower pot that I used before. That way, get some of the dirt out of there. bigger potatoes. New potatoes right out of the ground. The skin is very, very thin. As you can see, just with my nail barely scratching it whenever I'm picking it, the skin comes off. So we're gonna be really careful. There's one of our, I'm gonna say probably, I don't know if that's a seed potato, or I don't know, but that one is starting to rot. I know one thing, I will not be out here too much right now. It's starting to warm up quite a bit. It was really packed in the bottom here. The roots went down in there. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, that is just the roots on the bottom. Okay. So, I did buy these planters first. These were about $10, I think, um, at Home Depot. And they have these, the trays on the bottom, which actually allows water to come out. And the great thing about this is, I actually bought these, and I think, maybe these were 15 or 20, I don't remember, but these were cheaper, I think. They do not have a tray on the bottom. And I planted potatoes in one of the yellow ones, not realizing when we got a bunch of rain that they didn't have holes in it. So my potatoes were floating in the water. It was completely full of water. 
and I had to take a drill and drill holes around the bottom to let all the water out. So those potatoes are not doing so well. I do have one sprouting, but I did plant more in there. So not sure how those will do, but we'll see. It's sprouting, so I'm getting something out of it. So these I would definitely use again. I just have to make sure if I use these that they have the holes in them for sure. So I'm gonna put this dirt back in here and then we're gonna go wave the potatoes. All right. Here's the other one I was talking about. See the green coming up? So that's one of them that's sprouting, but this was completely full of water and I had to put drain holes in it. The great thing now about this and this dirt here is I can either plant in these again or I can use them for something else. So the great thing about the dirt in there now is I can actually use that for something else or I can plant something directly in that. I can plant carrots in there, I can plant some beets, some radishes, whatever I wanted. Or I can use that and I can fill something else and I can use that dirt for something um, you know, flowers, if I want to start some fall crops, I have plenty of dirt. I can reuse all this. And I love that. I love doing these containers. I have not done these before. So first time growing potatoes in containers. So you could grow, I think you can grow zucchini in here. You could put one tomato plant in these. So they're pretty versatile. So if you don't have a garden, you don't have a lot of space and you have a patio, or you could set these out around your house and your landscaping and um, have edible landscaping. So you could plant, you know, put a potato in one of them, put some potatoes, put a tomato in one, put a pepper in one, um, zucchini in one, whatever you want. So it's just a thought. A good, easy way, especially if you don't have a lot of room or if you're just starting out, this would be a really versatile way, an easy way of having like a raised bed that you could move around pretty easily and not stationary like my nine back here. All right, so let's grab the bucket and let's take this in to weigh. Gotta watch out for all the little frogs. I have cardboard in my greenhouse as well. So this, this is the scale that we have. I zeroed it out to this bucket only. And so now we have, let's see, about seven, five, about seven pounds. That will focus. Nope, yeah. About seven pounds of potatoes. That's pretty close to the other container. This is showing um, six and a half, seven pounds of potatoes. That's approximately what I got in the other flower pot as well. So I need to go back and count how many plants. I don't know if that tells me how many, I'm not sure if more than one plant came out of a potato, which is possible if they had more than one sprout, but count how many plants. You're really supposed to get approximately two pounds per plant. And I did get more than that in my raised bed. So I may have planted too many in the flower pot, but all in all, I think that was pretty good. You know, 13 pounds of potatoes and two flower pots. So out of curiosity, let's just count and see how many plants that I actually pulled out. Maybe we can kind of see how many actually were from like one potato. Okay, so some of these, like these right here, they're like right together in the root. So I'm assuming those came from one potato. So I'm going to say there's probably, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants, maybe potatoes. Um, so if you do two, that's probably not too bad if you do two pounds per plant. All right, so if we're talking two pounds per plant, that's probably not too bad. Um, I did get a better yield out of the raised bed, but again, this is not bad at all. You could probably plant, you know, if you planted fewer, if I planted four in it, or maybe one just in the middle of the four, might get a better yield um, spacing wise. I'll have to try that out. So definitely gonna write this down because then next year I'll know, I learn from it. Since this is the first time doing this, I encourage you to write everything down because you will not remember. I think I'm going to and I will not. Like I planted some small melons 
and some small watermelon and I didn't have time to label them so I placed the package where I, where I planted it and I took a picture of it. And so that's in my phone. I still haven't got them labeled. And I was out here the other day and I have totally forgotten which ones I planted where. They're coming up now so I know where they're at but I need to go back in my picture and I need to label them and make sure that I know what they are because I have totally forgotten. So be sure to take records, write down stuff. If you need to just draw rough diagrams of your raised beds or your garden or whatever you plant, write it down. That way you can keep track of your what you plant, what you harvest, and maybe you need to plant more of something next year or not as much of something next year. Maybe you've got an abundance of something that your family does not really enjoy very much. We'll see. Um, I've gotten quite a few <laughs> sugar snap peas and um, I'm really the only one that's eating them. While they're really good, I'm hoping I can eat all of them that I harvested the other day before they go bad. Keep records, enjoy trying new things, and um, I hope you enjoy your garden this year and I hope you're having a wonderful summer so far.